the shape of the scar that I want. And usually you can play with these for a while. It doesn't have to be um, the kind of thing that you have to decide on everything right there. But you can also texturize this as it's drying. And I'm going to do several of them so that we get a sense of how it kind of works and adds on to the face. If you would just want some scars, um, this is kind of a nice way to do it. And it'll end up being uh, something that you have made your own prosthetic by. So I just take this and dab it on. And as it dries, and it, it will take a while too because it's kind of thick. When we're doing that, I'll do one more over here and do something kind of round. And I crinkled this paper because you can get a lot of texture out of it if you are, um, you know, if I did this on really flat tin foil, what would happen is it would come out and it would be super flat and kind of shiny. But by crinkling it up and then putting it on top of that, you get the texture of what's underneath it. So I'm just going to leave a little bit more here. And then we're pretty good. So I'll take this, cover that up, and maybe by the end of class I'll be able to take them off. But I like, if I'm doing those, I like to let them dry overnight. So it's, um, it's not a question of um, doing it super fast, you have to plan ahead for that, okay? Um, then I want to show you also uh, what I've got here, which is crepe hair. Um, so you guys come a little closer so you can see. Um, unless you're looking up there. Or it's not, not. Uh, it's not up there. So come on. Um, I wonder if I should say this for when it's videoed because that might be useful to them to see it on the video. Well, she's she's ready, whatever. Yeah. Oh, it is video? Yeah, no, I'm recording. It's oh, just, they'll be able to see it later. They just can't see it on the TV now. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Um, so this is crepe hair and it comes in all sorts of different colors. And you can get it in blonde or brown or whatever. I just happen to have a lot of this. So when you're doing this, uh, it comes with this braided um, wrap. And you have to cut it, and eventually it takes a while to do. But I like to uh, make sure that as I'm doing it, I'm not tearing the hair. Because this is hair that is all kind of woven together, but pulls out separately. So hang on one second. I'm going to grab this scissor. And you can see by like getting in here and cutting this, it's going to be a lot easier to do. And as I pull this out, it will release. And you can kind of open it up, and the hair will come out. And if you use it separately, um, or if you use it um, without ironing it and getting it straight, you can use it very curly, and it will come out very curly because it's been braided. It's kind of like if you braid your hair overnight and wet it and sleep and braid, your hair is going to be really curly the next morning. So as we do it and open it up, you'll see that the curls are pretty tight. There we go. And once you open that up, that hair is going to be pretty curly. And your choice here is to like take it downstairs and you could put an iron on it and get it really straight. But watch what happens if you go too far. You can pull it and that will happen. Okay? So you can use this because it's a very natural edge and we can put it together and make a beard. Okay? So by simply taking that, we have that edge there. I'm going to take this scissor and just cut this off here. All right. Put that there. And when this would go on the face, what you want to do is take it with a brush and sometimes there are, uh, you can get a board that has a whole lot of nails on it and you can use that. I think that's kind of a overkill for what we're doing here. You just want the ends really soft and then when you trim it up, okay, 
There's a name for that in your book. I forget the name for the term, but they're also wicked dangerous. And I like to kind of keep our shop a little bit safe. So once I brush it out, it, it, you can see that it's gotten all sort of fuzzy at the end. And what I'll do is kind of take that and control it a little bit more. And when you cut it, becomes more even and then you push it out a little bit at the top and these top hairs will stick to the face first. So you put spirit gum down and then you just take this and you apply it directly to the face. So I'll do that for you when we, when we do the makeup. But you can kind of spread it out as much as you want and make it as tight as you want. This hair here is a little bit matty so I'm just going to kind of open that up a little bit and you can just see that, that this can be used for eyebrows, it can be used for um, sideburns, it can be used for long beards, so you can cut it as much as you want. And if you want to, right, you can separate it again. So depending on how long it you want it, once it's on the face, you can trim it and then trim it down so that you get what you want. And you can just like, if you want to do eyebrows, is it okay to put spirit gum on your eyebrows? Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. it'll come out yeah. without like ripping out your eyebrows? Yeah, if you use, um, uh, there's um, the glue stick, right? Oh. Right, the uh, Elmer's glue stick. Oh. Right? This is what drag queens use all the time. Oh, Okay. so you just like mat it down You first. mat it down, you brush it, you mat it down, and then you put the glue stick on and you let it dry. And it's still gonna show. Okay. You have to do it about four times. Okay, right. and then you put the spirit gum over and, and that. And then you put the spirit gum over that. You, wow. And you would completely lose your own eyebrow that way, and you can put whatever on on you after that. So it's... Will, that, will the glue stick take out your eyebrow? No, because it's water soluble. Oh! Right. Nice. So you want to be able to do that, but it takes probably three or four times before you get it really smooth. Oh. So if you want to like move your eyebrow up on an angle or something like that, you can definitely do that. Hmm. Um, what I wanted to show you next was uh, this flat one. Okay? This has become, I did this one and I ironed it. And this is really long. And I just took the time to iron it out and have it be really flat and straight. And again, uh, as you put in my nose, Greg said I sounded like uh, Lauren Bacall today. <laughs> uh, right. So I'm going to have you hold that. Right? And uh, hold it sideways. There we go. So if you take this and you drag it through several times, it's going to kind of fluff it up. Little hairs are going to come out, but you want to get it so that it's where you want it to be in terms of the softness in here. And then you can kind of open it up. So you're using it in a much straighter way here. So what kind of character might have a really long mustache? You know, if you. I don't know if you gelled it like Captain Hook, but... Mm -hmm. you, uh, there's, but this way, it becomes facial hair for the mustache. So you can use any kind of style that you want. You can trim it, you can add it when it's long, and then trim it on the body as well. So you, I always, if I'm doing that, I make sure it's a little long, and then I shape it to the body. Do you use this? Um, like, do you save that yeah, or not? I, I wouldn't, because it's, it's not, no longer part of this. So this you can do over and over and over again. If you do a ball cap and you want the hair to be open and around the ball cap, you would just add multiple layers of this. And it would it'd take a while. But um, I used this on the horse for A Midsummer Night's Dream. And I did blacks and grays and whites. And um, I don't know, I mean, it must have taken me two days to do it because it was a really big horse head that I went on the actor's body, or the, the ass head. But it's, it's a really pretty solid way to work, and if you get down the top edge that goes next to the skin, and you can, you can build it up on layers, so you start here, and then you go up here, and then you go up here, and what happens is the top layer is the most important one, and that's where you want to make sure that you get a really clean line, because that's the one that's going to show on top with this little trick of kind of cutting it and then pushing it forward with your thumb. 
gives it sort of an angle. And that's what will it kind of take the, the hair and push it out so the top hair is kind of move out a little bit. And then you like lay it down right onto the skin that has the uh, spirit gum on it. So you do a little spirit gum here or wherever you want it. Then you add the hair and leave it alone. So it's um, those are really important ways to build new characters. And I want you to think about hmm, where would there be hair on this character? Is what kind of hair it is? Is it? So let's see if our thing over here is ready. And if it's steaming, then we'll go to that. And you can look at different.